The Stanley Whitman House. You can be forgiven for not knowing who Stanley Whitman was, because he wasn't. The house name is an amalgam of the 18th century owners. Built around 1709 by Deacon John Stanley, one of Farmington's founders, the Stanley Whitman House is a museum of the earliest colonial American history, preceding the Declaration of Independence, and serves as the visitor's center in the heart of historic Farmington, Connecticut, a colony created by British Puritans. This building is recognized for its architectural quality and integrity uh, because it's one of the last buildings of its kind left in Connecticut. 1709 is considered first period, so it's a time in which the English are really just in the first 50 to 80 years flooding to these shores, establishing these communities. And in our part of New England, these are Puritan communities, so these are Reformed Protestants. The Stanley Whitman House was named as a National Historic Landmark in 1962. And in fact, Stanley Whitman House was the first building recognized as a landmark in Connecticut, so we're pretty proud of that. And I must say, in the winters, it's most striking because this particular architectural style lends itself beautifully to severe New England winters. Now, the English who came here were from southern England. They didn't expect the blizzards, the snow, and the cold. But having said that, the steeply pitched roof of this house, when the sun hits it, the snow and the ice just kind of slide right off. The uh, hand quarried stone central chimney, when all the fireplaces are going, the heat radiates from the stone and heats the uh, rooms. So in the end, it's really a brilliant architectural style for the severe winters that we get. Well, on behalf of Her Majesty and the <laughs> British people as a whole, I, I thank you very much. You are most welcome. <laughs> and they see the blizzards and the winter weather as uh, signs of God's displeasure, too. Well. So weather factors in a great they deal. They must have thought he was really yeah, upset. That's right. that's right. What are we doing wrong? One thing that's comical about this architectural style, it's got an overhanging second story. And in fact, this is one of the last buildings left in Connecticut with that overhanging second story. Well, that's an adaptation for urban environments. You have that overhanging second story to grab a few extra feet when your neighbor is 12 inches from you on either side. Well, the man who built this house in about 1709 had six acres around this house. He didn't need that. As Farmington's visitor centre, the house affords visitors an opportunity to experience life in colonial New England. We like to use this house and these families as a lens through which to see the larger town but in the larger colony because you can't look at a house in isolation. The people who lived here were involved in a multiplicity of activities to keep their communities going, to keep their colony going, to keep their church going. And in our part of New England, these are Puritan communities, so these are Reformed Protestants. Families that lived in the house were all farmers, but practiced other trades also. Solomon Whitman, an arbitrator, justice of the peace, probate judge, town clerk and shoemaker. And before him, Thomas Smith, a weaver. So this is the loom that, um, like one that our first male resident, Thomas Smith, would have used. He wove mostly linen and wool. Most of the linen fabrics that he was weaving were blue and white linen check, which would have been used for shirting, for men's work shirts, would have been used for aprons, bed hanging. This parlor contains a locally made clock. It was made by Lewis Curtis, about a mile north of where we are local clockmaker who machined all of his own parts. Very unusual for this period in time. You'll also see a William and Mary style high boy on the right here, which has burled walnut inlaid as a veneer through most of the cabinetry. The architecture and the artifacts of the Stanley Whitman house are both well worth the visit. But it's the people that make it special. Tending to the summer treat of an authentic to the era dooryard garden, the house is still very much part of the Farmington colony, and just as they did in colonial days, everyone here plays their part in this historic community, continuing the history of the house and providing a packed program of events. Farmington, Connecticut. The Colonials were right. A great place to put down roots. The Stanley Whitman House awaits your pleasure in Farmington, Connecticut, a cultural treasure. Funding for Connecticut's cultural treasures is provided by CPTV, Connecticut Tourism, the State Historic Preservation Office of the DECD, 
Melinda and Paul Sullivan and People's United Bank, what know-how can do.